You may have seen that the prices for building materials, specifically wood, has in some cases actually tripled. Things are going crazy out there when it comes to building and getting lumber. Now we're going to talk about some other options that you might be able to use. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. And if you're looking to learn more about health and homesteading, then hit the subscribe button. But it was brought to my attention by my brother-in-law. You see, we finished building a house last fall. And now, since that time, some of the prices of wood have doubled or even tripled. Now, you think of things like OSB. OSB is kind of what people would typically think of as plywood. Now, it's, I know it's not properly plywood, but just to get in everybody's head what we're talking about here. So a, a four by eight foot sheet of this formerly was like 750 it's upwards of 26 dollars right now so you're literally talking that's over triple the price i mean it's literally i mean it is skyrocketing i don't think that's quite an exaggeration so what are some things that you could do to save money if you're looking to move to the country what do you do about the wood situation the price of of various materials right now some things are actually a little bit difficult to get a hold of so I was just looking also today on realtor.com realtor.com gives you a better up-to-date uh, depiction of what's going on in the housing market because if you're looking on Zillow sometimes Zillow at least historically anyway you look and you think okay this this house yeah I should go check it out and it's already sold whereas realtor more often will tell you okay this one's contingent this one's pending and so it gets you a little more up to date and I was just looking there today just just to get an idea of what's going on in the market and of a seriously rural area what I saw was looking at the newest houses on the market with 10 acres in the country thinking of you know simple little homesteading the out of the top 34 newest houses so the houses that just came out recently 26 of them are already either uh, pending or contingent meaning they're already in the process of being sold I've personally never seen something like this I was just talking to a realtor not long ago and she said the same thing she said we just can't keep houses on the market i mean they are just they're just flying off like hotcakes as it were and so not only are things very expensive in the building market and that's probably got a couple of factors right there when it comes to construction materials we've had the fires out west california way or oregon but not only there you've also had the hurricanes taking place and so because of that these are some of the reasons on top of covid which has made people redo their houses like crazy because they're home all the time and you know and then also people got money in the mail and so you can think uh, there's a number of reasons that all together have, have just brought a perfect storm for increasing the prices of building material and that's probably even more to it than that well one option is that you can just simply wait it out hopefully these prices will go down uh, that's the hope you never really know and that's that's the difficulty with timing the market when it comes to anything unless you really are an insider or know somebody in the business and you know what's coming in the future which i certainly don't and i don't claim to that's one option is you can just wait and see hey you wait a few months and you see do prices end up going back down uh, i mean will they ever go back to what they were i i certainly hope so i hope that it doesn't stay at you know triple the cost of what it used to be for some of the building materials but you never really do know hopefully it will i imagine it'll go down some but i have no idea i've i have no inside information to answer that but one option is you can simply wait it out the second option is that well this doesn't really answer it totally you could buy a pre-existing house you could buy a house that's already built so that you don't necessarily have to deal with that and i know that even the prices of housing has gone up significantly over the last several years uh, obviously we had a downturn several years back after the you know great recession but now they have gone up significantly and much of the country is probably actually higher than it was before that time period so the cost of housing is very expensive right now as you get further out into the country it typically gets cheaper but as i've looked across the nation it's not really that cheap anywhere i mean it's cheaper in certain areas you go to the midwest you look in places like arkansas missouri you look in michigan you look in maine there are certain places that have relatively cheap housing you look out west and it's really hard to find things out in california uh, idaho is even significantly more expensive than it used to be 
and you know Washington and so forth so any of these places have gotten to be relatively expensive but it basically depends on what you have the money for but buying a pre-existing house may help you avoid this tripling in wood prices the third option kind of goes along with the last option you could buy a mobile home obviously mobile homes typically go down in price but that's not really true i don't think that you know i've heard that for years but when you look on the market that really doesn't seem to be the case these days even land you know depending on where you are land with 10 acres can be you know hundreds of thousands of dollars it does not seem that you know the prices of mobile homes is going down it seems like pretty much anything out there don't take my word for it i could be totally wrong but just from my i mean i look for housing for years i've traveled for years full time and when i was around the country i'd look at land i'd look at the price of land i'd look at the price of houses mobile homes and and they don't seem to be going down so I just say that obviously they're typically not the same quality as a standard house but if you don't have the money for a standard stick built house getting a mobile home can be a real legitimate option and the option with that is you buy one that's pre-existing already on site or you go and buy some land and then you can if you have to fell some trees you drop the trees and you know if you want a foundation depending on how you want to put it in that's really up to you but a mobile home is a real legitimate option if that's what you're looking to do and especially if you don't have the money these days for a standard stick built house so let's go on to number four is now this one's really for the DIY or the do-it-yourselfer that guy or girl who's willing to kind of put in the you know sweat equity into it and that is buying some dirt buying some ground some property some land and if it has trees on it you can cut those trees down and you can get your own lumber mill i don't know if you can rent them somehow but you can at least buy them for not inexpensive but not that expensive and so you could either make yourself a log cabin or you could cut your own lumber and that is an option obviously that would be cheaper the difficulty with that is unless you're really cutting some really quality lumber you'd want to find out what the uh, stipulations are in the region that you're working so if you're in one of those deep country areas you'd be surprised some areas have, are high regulation areas regardless of how rural they are but there are other areas where you can do whatever you want you can literally build however you want now building something quality and uh, safe is a should be a priority for everybody right so i'd hope you do that but uh, you do want to find out what the regulations are in the area that you live because let's say you went to go do this and you found out that no actually the zoning laws or the regulations in this area preclude doing something like this so make sure whatever area that you are buying in that you can do what it is that you're hoping to do and by the way if you're going to cut your own timber and use that it's not like you just simply cut it down and then start building obviously you have to process it once you have the boards finally you actually have to let it season and you're probably going to let, let it season for at least a year you're going to have to look into that and now if you are able to kiln dry it you can do it quicker but once again that's that's you probably don't have a kiln and so you can make one but you you get the idea so that's that's a longer term project if you're looking to fill your own trees and use them it's a great option because it could be potentially the cheapest way to build a home but it also is a more long-term project and then you've got to decide what are you going to do in the meantime are you going to stay in a in a you know motor home or a rv or something like that and then once again i wish didn't have to tell you this but then you also have to look at zoning because many areas even deeply rural areas often have laws against having a motorhome on a property and so that can also stop you from doing that so that that is something to consider and you know but if you're far enough out you're gonna have to work out how all those logistics are so you might be able to do that you might not be able to but you know if you're the kind of guy or gal that can actually put up with the whole process of felling your own timber and making a house out of it and if you can I'm sure that would be incredibly fulfilling. Option number five is to build a tiny house. Obviously, that is the craze these days. You got all kinds of YouTube channels about tiny houses and you can understand the dream because the dream is not to be locked into a mortgage for, what, 30 years or even maybe more. 
And so, well, yeah, obviously you could, if you got cash, you can go buy a house just like that. But if, if that's the case, you're probably not watching this video, you just go out and buy a house, right? But you understand the point that many people are seeking to get a tiny house because they're looking to have either no mortgage or as little debt as possible. And also just to live a simpler life, to have less stuff. Stuff doesn't really make you happy. Now, I don't have a tiny house. I don't have a big house. I actually have a relatively small house, but uh, I, I can see the benefits for those who desire it and those who can handle a tiny house. Now, you see often people who do have tiny houses only have them for a while. They have them temporarily until they can, you know, go into something bigger. And you understand why, because especially if you live in the country, it wouldn't be easy. I mean, I think of all the labor and the effort that goes into gardening and then bringing your produce into the house and then the processing in that. And you might be able to do it in a, in a tiny house, but it would not be easy. I mean, especially some of these little tiny, you know, hundred square foot house. I mean, it would be almost impossible to do any serious amount of uh, major homesteading stuff. Not impossible. I say that if you have a shed and you do all your work in a shed, that could actually remedy that situation. So a tiny house can be a great option to save you really a lot of money. But also when it does come to tiny homes, many of them, their price tag is really steep considering the square footage. I mean, you have these, you know, 100, 130 square foot houses, sometimes, you know, ranging between 30 to, I don't know, 70 or more thousand dollars. And you think, oh, okay, that's much cheaper in a house. It's way cheaper than an average house. But now you're totally into like the mobile home range and you could get a real legit size house in a mobile home. Yes, obviously you're gonna have a much, much higher quality interior and everything in a tiny house, but it's really tiny. And so it's, it's really up to you what, what you want to have and what you want to put up with but tiny houses could work for you totally but also when you're in that range the you know mobile home is also could be a, a good option the other thing which i've said on another video is in most regions you cannot legally have a tiny house there's very few places in the united states where you can legally live in a tiny house i mean it's ridiculous i think it's i think it's really silly that, that the, I understand why, because people don't want to lower the property value in their area, but I am a man who enjoys freedom and I wish humans would have more freedom to do the things that they wish to do within reason and safety. I'm totally all for that. But you know, my opinion doesn't really matter when it comes to legalities. The reality is if you can't do it in your area and you hide it, you might get booted off there or fined terribly at some point. So that's another point to consider if you are thinking of going the tiny route. Option number six, and hey, by the way, if you have some options I haven't thought of, please write them below in the comments. I'd love to hear. You could be a benefit to somebody else, and if I haven't thought about it, maybe somebody else hasn't thought about it, please share with us in the comments below. But number six is renting. Now, if you're looking to move to the country, an option is to rent. If you rent in the city already and you're like, man, I rent, I rent in the city, I didn't wanna go rent in the country. Well, ultimately, maybe that's not your ultimate goal, but you can still do it for a time to get out of the cities. And at the same time, you might be saving a significant amount of money. I mean, depending on where you go in the country, it's often cheaper to rent and do things than it would be in the city anyway. So if you're able to keep your job, if you're one of those individuals either you're commuting so you can keep your job or the other option is if you work from a computer or you can work remotely you can still do this you can still rent and maybe make the same amount of money in an area that has a lower standard of living at least financially wise so you can pay less for a place and as you're paying less then you can be saving up funds for either buying the land that you're hoping to get into or simply buying a house out in the country. So it's really up to you. These are just six options, not necessarily what you should do, but options to at least begin to think about, especially with the incredible high price, incredibly high prices that are taking place right now. Now, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. God bless and have a fantastic day.